Hello friends, welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, if today we are starting a new series in computer science naming lecture series on performance analysis and computing systems. In this uh, the title of the today's lecture would be significance of performance analysis. In the first half of the lecture we will try to understand un performance, what is the performance and performance goals and steps for analyzing performance. To discuss this topic we have with us our subjects were Dr. Aditya Sinha. Dr. Sena is assistant professor in a prominent university in NCR of Delhi. Without further ado, I would like to welcome ma'am to our studios and request her to start the lecture. Welcome ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, hello users. So uh, today with this lecture, we are going to begin with a, a new series of lectures on performance analysis of computing systems. Okay. So uh, we must be knowing that there are so many uh, computing equipments or we can say um, there are so many machines around around us be it electrical or electronic and these machines are there to help us to simplify our tasks automate them and to make our uh, goals much more efficient to achieve right so uh, when we are talking about efficiency it is uh, like it has very much to do with the performance means that if the performance of a particular equipment or a computing system or a, or a simple machine is not that much, uh, then our goals won't be uh, according to our uh, desired whatever format we have set it. So uh, performance goals are very much important to us and what are the performance metrics that we'll be using uh, to measuring uh, the performance criteria of a particular system. So uh, to just to have a go through on all these topics, uh, today's introductory uh, lecture is on uh, significance of performance analysis, understanding how the performance is going to affect a, a particular system. So uh, in this lecture, we are mainly going to start with uh, fundamentally uh, what we understand by the word performance. Okay, so it uh, just uh, when we are spelling out the word performance, it means that uh, it could be uh, like very ambiguous at performance of what performance to what extent at what rate etc. Okay, so it's uh, very important to know mathematically define what performance means and how it is important for our uh, machines or our computing devices. It is. And then we will go uh, forward towards uh, understanding task performance different types of performance uh, uh, that are associated with a particular set of tasks that are very important these days. And then we'll talk about uh, the performance analysis with the system, uh, different metrics employed, uh, workload distribution, etc. Then we'll talk of uh, what are the different goals the, uh, that we have to achieve that are uh, like uh, quite mandatory uh, with respect to uh, the performance requirement. Then uh, in order to achieve these goals, it is very much important that we have to follow a certain idealistic steps towards understanding or towards analyzing uh, these sort of go goals. Okay? So uh, what are these steps are and how these steps are idealistically they are like sequenced in particular order. Uh, obviously we will be speaking of uh, the metrics. Uh, what type of metrics could be used or the characteristic of a good performance metric and obviously we will uh, also discuss about uh, the common performance metrics that are normally employed for uh, measuring the performance of uh, daily computing systems. And uh, we'll follow up this with uh, evaluation and analysis techniques uh, that are commonly used. And obviously, we will uh, not uh, the least, but we will discuss about the faults and the flaws that are commonly met when a beginner starts analyzing the performance of a computing system. Now, understanding performance. Obviously, when we start talking in context of computing system, there are so many things in our mind. The first thing that comes into our mind is whether the computing system is in the first place, it's working fine or not. That is what we call operational. Is it operational uh, on the instantaneous, whether uh, given a time t, whether the computing system is working or not? That is what operational is. Then the functional lifetime. If the machine 
is uh, supposed to run for a particular span of time, whether it is uh, being uh, properly working towards that uh, time span or not, or it is there has been some disruptions, etc. So this is uh, the functional lifetime of the system. Then the developmental stages and modules. Obviously, when we uh, talk of a computing system, we know that the computing system is uh, not just a single entity. It is rather a very huge uh, thing that is divided into separate functional modules or uh, um, according to its development, uh, it could be, uh, you know, it could be um, broken down into different developmental stages, etc. So here uh, we are also concerned about uh, what is the performance of those uh, individual modules when we are taking them out. Okay, so, uh, it means that uh, when we are just uh, making a union of all these uh, performance criteria associated with each and every module, each and every stage, then we come across the performance of the overall entire, like the uh, system functionalities. This is followed by the higher throughput. Obviously, throughput means what? It means that per unit time, what is the performance criteria of that system is? how much work is done, how much units of work is done rather uh, in a given uh, unit of time period. The unit could be anything, it could be second, minute or any other higher uh, dimension of time. Then improved complexity and computation and communication. Obviously, what happens when we are talking about complexity, it is not always algorithmic complexity that we come across when we are doing computation. We have seen that when we are uh, designing algorithms, uh, for, what the first thing that we do is we find out the complexity. What is the bigger notation of this algorithm or what is the uh, smaller notation, worst case, average case, etc. performances of that particular algorithm. But when uh, we are connected to other systems, it means that we are doing a kind of networking. And when we are doing networking, it means that whatever um, messages or whatever um, uh, like uh, frames of packets that we are communicating, it's going through the, through the wires sometimes over the wireless. Okay? So during this, we are doing a kind of communication. And the communication is also associated with certain kind of complexity. So we have to be aware of uh, what type of complexity in communication as well as complexity associated in computation is involved. Because both of them is uh, very important when we are uh, talking about uh, computing systems in these days where they are not only standalone, they are also networked with higher dimensions and uh, with uh, higher needs. All right. All right. Now, also we are concerned about the processing time. Processing time is what? Uh, whenever a user uh, gives certain uh, tasks, some, some queries or some uh, set of commands to get his task processed, uh, then it, it, that from that point of time that the user gets um, his query uh, given to the computing system in a certain format and the computer starts processing it, and comes out with a desired output in a desired format, that span is the processing time. So this time, this uh, delay has to be minimized as much as it could be without hampering the performance, of course. Okay, so uh, the performance time should be very short so that the responsiveness of that system is uh, increased, it's improved, right? And of course, reliability, we are talking of machines, systems, uh, so they have uh, like a great tendency towards failures. So it has to be uh, reliable and uh, tolerate, uh, must be tolerating uh, the faults, whatever um, from the hardware part or the, or due to some kind of software um, complications, uh, they are there. It has to be dealt with so that uh, the reliability part is increased. Then comes the underlying security. Again, since we are uh, in a networked world, we are sharing information, we have to be careful about how our information that is being transformed is secured or not. Okay, so there are so many encryption uh, strategies are there. So you can see that when we, whenever we are talking about a computing system, 
all these other characteristics that are associated with the system and these characteristics we have to address, we have to say uh, design these characteristics in such a way that our challenges are met towards having a high performance computing system. Okay. So uh, understanding all uh, what a performance actually is in context of computing system, we are now in a state of defining what a performance means actually. Okay, So uh, we can say that when we are defining uh, performance, we can see that uh, there are certain things that are associated. The first is uh, optimization of the available resources. Okay, be it hardware or software, does not matter. But the optimized utilization of uh, available resources is of prime importance, first thing. Second thing is uh, when we, whenever we are uh, keeping in mind resources, we have to be also aware of the set of objectives that we have set, right? These objectives have to be fulfilled. Without this, the purpose of the computing system would fail in the first place. And again, the third and very important is uh, the constraints that we have. We are making certain assumptions and accordingly, we are also setting limitations for us uh, in the form of certain computing constraints. And the capacities, what type of capacities we are being afford, uh, afforded by the, that particular system that is being set. So these are the four things when put together, we can say that performance can be defined as the extent to which a computing system functions to optimize the utilization of available resources in order to achieve a set of objectives under the impact of certain constraints and capacities that are being offered. Okay. Now let us come to task performances. There are so many tasks that are there uh, to make our uh, daily lives more efficient towards certain goals. right? So we will take up some of them so that you can get a essence of what type of performance uh, we are talking about that are associated with the uh, particular tasks. Okay. So the first is a specification of performance requirements. What are the requirement specifications that we uh, would have in the, in the initial phase of say building up a system or any, anything, any starting a new algorithm or a procedure or anything. Right? So specification of those initial requirements is very important it will decide what type of, what sort of, to what extent the performance has to be exploited okay? and measured obviously. Second is uh, evaluation of design alternatives. We are into designing a particular computing system to achieve a, set of, a certain set of goals. right? And obviously since there are constraints associated with a particular system, we can always uh, design prototypes, say uh, 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 there is a prototype 1 with certain set of constraints, okay? prototype 2 with certain other set of constraints, say so C1 and C2 are the constraints. Okay? So whatever constraint best uh, is suits to our application that we can tolerate such constraints will take up that particular design. So evaluation of the design alternatives is very much important um, depending upon the analysis of the alternatives that we have in hand, uh, it will be easier for us to performance, uh, to do a kind of performance analysis of the design uh, that are uh, made uh, or say that are built up um, in the prototypical phase. Okay. Third is comparison of two or more systems on the same initial grounds, yes, it is important. Like we uh, just, uh, it's been stated that uh, when we are uh, building up systems, we are not building a particular, only a single prototype. We are into building uh, several set of prototypes, uh, whichever works um, under uh, uh, whatever, you know, set of constraints that are given. So um, for this, uh, there has to be certain uh, stage where we have to compare the performance of uh, these two design prototypes or right to see which uh, of the prototypes, given prototypes are conforming to our uh, design goals. Okay? And uh, why initial grounds? Because comparisons can only be done when we have the basic uh, initial parameterization so that uh, some fairness is given to the system uh, comparison. Okay, that is why the same initial grounds, grounds uh, in the sense it could be the same initial values or range of values etc. Okay. Or uh, say for example, um, 
same set of uh, parameters you are taking itself, okay? Say the comparison on uh, temporal, it could be a temporal basis or spatial basis. So if we are comparing on a temporal basis, both the systems or both the prototypes has to be on that particular uh, dimension, on the temporal dimension. It's, it would be unfair if we are taking spatial dimension uh, on another system also. It would become an unfair comparison, so, okay? Then uh, identifying the internal as well as external system parameters there are parameters that uh, impact on the system internally as well as externally okay internally means that whenever we are designing a system uh, which could be if we are thinking on a very smaller level it could be an algorithm right because the system is made, made up of a number of algorithms only so when we are designing an algorithm algorithm is what it's just like a black box okay you're giving input uh, from one side and you'll get the output from the other side in between the processing is going on but uh, whenever you say you are giving the input to the system, they are all the input parameters that are implicitly there in the system, okay? Now, in some cases, it happens that some external parameters are given into that algorithm, are um, injected into that algorithm when it is, its, uh, its um, execution is ongoing or it's in progress, okay? It could be random uh, parameters or anything. Okay, some, some deciding factor that will um, change the course of the algorithm, okay, the control flow of the algorithm. So these parameters that are given into the algorithm, given to the black box, when the processing of that particular algorithm is on um, going stage, those parameters are called external parameters. So uh, identifying the internal and external parameters, how they impact the system is also um, equally important. Then, uh, when we have this inter, um, internal and external parameters with us, it's very important that we tune the values that are given for these parameters as well. Tuning in the sense is uh, what type of values initially it should go on, or is the range of values that it could, you know, uh, modulate it, or uh, the, f the final value that it should go. In um, simple words, if we say that, Tuning means that we are uh, forming a kind of uh, state space model, say for example, okay. There are several states and um, there would be certain probabilities for jumping from one state to another, there's a transition probabilities and each state corresponds to a particular value or range of values or anything, okay. So uh, this um, tuning means that from one state or from one set of value, what is the probability that we jump into other states of values etc. So this is the tuning. Once we are done with the tuning, it's important to find out uh, what are the bottlenecks in the system. Bottlenecks in this uh, thing is uh, those uh, stages in the development uh, process uh, that could affect the system or uh, there may be, you know, uh, very tight constraints that are put on, onto the system which we have to bypass or we have to take care of. Then comes workload characterization. Obviously, when uh, a system is designed, uh, certain assumptions and, uh, you know, initial, uh, just to give the system a start, certain initialization is uh, done with the variables or like internal, external parameters or some deciding variables, etc. Okay, and uh, uh, these initialization and default um, values that we are giving, this only when propagated further becomes a uh, certain constraint. Certain constraints uh, get put onto our uh, system performance, okay? So uh, this decides a lot what type of workload characterization uh, would be, okay? So uh, is the characterization is going to be very much static or it will uh, become dynamic with respect to time or with respect to space or with respect to variation in certain other parameters involved, okay? So uh, it means that whether there will be dependencies or not over variables. Then uh, we will find out uh, what type of appropriate hardware efficiency is there Okay, then uh, whether the software hardware efficiency is very much easier to understand because the make of the hardware is what we are uh, talking about. And when we say software efficiency, it is basically the compatibility of software with hardware. 
see when we are uh, uh, just saying software it it ambiguous it, it's again a very ambiguous word because it refers to so many software tools that are available the platforms platforms for coding for visualization for you know mining data etc so tools techniques um, platforms and uh, when more than one platform they are uh, they coincide into a single uh, you know, uh, space we call it IDEs, internet, integrated development environments. So, uh, all these type of software things, whether they are compatible with the given hardware or not, we have to check in first so that we can proceed uh, with the performance of that system further. And uh, once we are done with the hardware and software, we have to do the capacity planning. Okay, capacity planning, uh, obviously, obviously, this is done with respect to the target application that we have to address to because all the systems, uh, the computing systems that are being developed, they are not generic models. They are always specific to a set of certain goals or whatever user requirements we can say. Okay, so uh, with respect to a certain application or a certain target audience we can say, the, the customers that we have. Uh, so according to their needs, their uh, goals, we have to uh, perf uh, perform this particular uh, capacity planning. What capacity the instructions would be processed, say for example, to what capacity the um, data would be buff buffered into the system, likewise. And uh, obviously we can do the prediction part also. Uh, these days uh, we have seen that uh, there are so many applications where mining is done, uh, where uh, you know, uh, a certain forecasting is done, maybe it could be a weather prediction or it could be say stocks prediction etc. Right? And uh, when we are doing this kind of prediction, it is basically on the uh, process of understanding if the workload gets increased uh, with respect to time. Uh, if it is static, then uh, there is no sort of prediction because we know the pattern that is associated. Okay, but when we are not knowing the pattern, when the workloads are coming, uh, you know, uh, the the rate that in which the workload enters into the system varies with the time. You cannot predict, but uh, still you would uh, try to uh, have a general idea of how the pattern is being developed, right? So this is called workload scalability, whether it is increasing or decreasing with respect to time, we are able to uh, do a, uh, some kind of uh, prediction or not. And then comes the user support, whether the users that are, um, uh, uh, say for example, they are uh, impacting on the system, whether the, uh, the number of users are increasing or decreasing with th uh, the time or not. And if it is, then whether the system that is being developed on our part, it is able to uh, adjust with the, the changes that are being happening in the environment, say user or workload, whatever. So this is very important. And feature extensibility. Uh, we have heard of this word uh, upgradation, right? Uh, a system uh, never stays in that manner. The system upgrades uh, as the features uh, comes into uh, place, the feature starts upgrading also according to the feedback that is given uh, by the user or the developers, uh, what they feel that okay, these uh, capacities or whatever, these features are there and we need, now need to extend the features so that uh, the quality of service gets increased. Okay, So feature extensibility is uh, again another uh, thing that uh, affects the prediction of the system. Now, uh, performance analysis. The, the, uh, we can say that the building blocks of performance analysis is system, metric, and workload. Uh, dear friends, in this part of the lecture, we are attempted to understand the what is performance is, performance goals, and steps for analyzing performance. On that note, we're going to take a break, and after the break, we will be resuming with the lecture. Thank you for watching.
Hello friends, welcome to CEC live lectures. Dear friends, in this lecture on significance of performance analysis, so far we have done understanding performance, uh, performance goals and steps for analyzing performance. In this part of the lecture, we will be continuing with performance goal in uh, analyzing performance. Uh, to discuss this topic, we have with us our subject expert Dr. Advitya Sinha and let us welcome Dr. Sinha and ask her to resume the lecture. Welcome ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay, welcome back viewers. Uh, so, uh, we were talking about computing systems and performance of the computer systems, right? So, now uh, what I want to uh, make clear on what system actually means. We know what performance e is and computing needs no introduction, right? Now, system could be, it could be a arbitrary collection of hardware, software, firmware, humanware, anything, okay? So, mostly it is in form of processor. Traditionally, Right, the part that is being processing uh, the data, everything, okay. Uh, the database where uh, the data is being stored and retrieved in an efficient manner, okay. And the network, network, uh, uh, what it is for, it is just for letting the users uh, or the systems to communicate whatever data they are storing in certain format. Processor, database and network, they were traditionally uh, forming the definition of a system. These days we have another uh, uh, criteria here that is data. We often think that data is what? It would be a numeric thing or an alphabet or uh, to some extent alphanumeric keys etc. But uh, these days we have higher dimensional data. A data having uh, you know the different uh, dimensions, it could be broken down into simpler forms, and these simpler forms uh, could be broken down into chains of uh, even simpler forms to get uh, these type of numeric or alphanumeric data. Okay, so these days uh, data can be thought of as a block of uh, code or a block of uh, encrypted. Um, like a set of uh, a set of data or set of values that are being embedded into it. And uh, when we have a system, we need metric to evaluate it, right? So metrics could be the response time, the throughput that is being calculated, that is a number of work units that are being accomplished uh, with respect to uh, the time unit that has been elapsed. And uh, the communication and complexity uh, associated with uh, the computation part as well that we just spoke uh, earlier. And uh, obviously these uh, with these metrics in our hand we can evaluate the performance of the system and uh, when, we, when we are evaluating the performance with the help of such metrics of a particular system uh, we cannot evaluate till we have workload over that system. Some, some workload, some functionality, some operation that computing system has to perform and it is going to perform only when the workload is being assigned. Okay. So, this workload could be, um, uh, it could be a representative collection of uh, certain user requests that are given to a system to um, get a set of tasks accomplished. Right. So, it could be uh, at the processor end. So, it is known as a processor workload. A uh, processor workload could be the different uh, sort of uh, instructions, different types of instruction, different, you know, there are so many instruction sets available to us. So, uh, to understand what type of set is being um, uh, given to the system and how many instructions has to be, um, you know, covered, uh, uh, it should be processed through a particular given time span, etc. So, this is what a processor workload is. Then there is a database workload, what type of uh, data has to be um, stored, has to be taken from the user in the first place and then buffered in uh, what format it has to be uh, and what is the size of the data which is very important these days. As we go to social networking, as we go to say any big data applications that we have, we have colossal amount of data and this data is uh, not the simplistic data, this, these are all higher dimension data. For example, when we do, uh, uh, when we use uh, the social platform, say we are doing some kind of Facebooking or uh, tweeting a particular um, uh, a small message, okay, if, uh, with a uh, one particular tweet, there is a huge colossal amount of information that is being stored, and all these uh, has to be stored in a particular format, 
and in a uh, when we are storing it in a certain format it has to be retrieved back as well so here our database workload can be defined as uh, the type of query the amount of query the amount of data itself uh, what type of uh, uh, dimension of data is being stored uh, and what type of query has to be performed how much time the query uh, performance would uh, take so all these are um, within the scope of database workload okay then comes the server work workload it's not always a thing that uh, whatever it's uh, taken as input uh, say for processing part or for database uh, query designing part etc these are uh, these uh, data are not always stored on the system itself right it is sometimes stored on the cloud or it is uh, stored on a distant uh, uh, server or some remote server so uh, uh, how much load the server is going to take in uh, it's of prime concern again and internet wo workload uh, again the networking part is coming in uh, that uh, how much data uh, how much uh, bandwidth is given to us uh, uh, what is the communication criteria whether there is um, the security issue or not so all the things that are associated with uh, internet working they are going to be acting as a uh, workload constraint in this part okay so this is all about a system metric and workload okay that are the uh, building blocks of performance analysis now let's understand the whatever theoretically we have studied so far mathematically we have understood things now let's understand it uh, with certain examples okay so let's uh, take a very simple example that we want to um, know uh, the performance of uh, a simple disk drive okay if we want to uh, uh, analyze the performance of a disk drive what metrics or uh, what are the things that we uh, come across obviously we would uh, like to uh, measure the capacity of the disk drive how much information it could hold and uh, price is again of a very important concern that uh, with huge capacity if the price is also immensely huge we won't be able to afford it so it becomes out of question then uh, reading and writing throughput given a particular time how much reading instructions are being uh, executed how much writing instructions are efficiently able to carry out by that particular system in this case our computing system is what it's a disk drive okay then seek latency whatever uh, the, the, the latent uh, information we are uh, looking for uh, seeking for uh how much time is being spent in that particular process is the latency for seeking a particular information energy consumption since a electronic item it will uh, consume certain energy whether it is a battery operated or it's directly driving the power from a direct power source or whatever but uh, energy is again of uh, important uh, thing to concern about then mean time to failure being a system failure is inevitable but what is the time that uh, uh, that particular system in our case it's uh, disk drive is uh, going to fail some kind of prediction or some kind of uh, say we have in our knowledge so that uh, certain things can be taken into our mind that okay it's going to fail what uh, alternatives that design alternatives that we have uh, spoken of uh, could be set into the picture emission of heat and noise mostly uh, this drive is a very uh, you know traditional device so uh, it tends to generate more heat and noise as uh, the hardware starts aging beyond maybe years or so according to the usage obviously and the form factor it is also important so this uh, with the help uh, of all these performance metrics we can easily understand how the disk drive is going to perform okay similarly let's take again another example of a computing system okay in general since uh, this is a lecture on computing uh, analysis all the computing systems uh, so why not take the computing system itself in general uh, so uh, if we want to uh, find out the performance uh, of such a system what are the tools that we would uh, require very general the generic part is a uh, load generator how much load it is able to take and the performance monitor uh, or whatever load it is being uh, taking workload say for example 
in form of instructions or word delivery or anything okay uh, so uh, how this uh, load with respect to time it's uh, getting uh, the variation is there and uh, to uh, analyze to understand this variation to track this variation we need to have uh, some kind of monitoring system so as to uh, know the performance every instant of time okay so performance uh, monitor is um, uh, required and then uh, say if we are concerned about uh, which type of monitor would be more suitable like uh, whether it's a hardware or a software thing uh, so then comes up uh, a certain criteria uh, more additional criteria like uh, the number of instructions that are being executed by a processor why not a processor is always associated with a computing system so what is a uh, processor's capability is in terms of number of uh, instructions executions then uh, degree of multi programming this is the age of parallel uh, programming multi programming uh, you know multiple cores that you have uh, might have uh, gone through uh, previously we had core 2 duo now we have i7 and uh, even moving forward so there are we started with a single core then uh, two cores like that four cores these days and again it's uh, you know evolving so a degree of multi programming that uh, a particular time a computing system is exploiting so uh, to understand that also we can um, take it up as a additional criteria and obviously the responsiveness of the system when it is not connected to the network as well as when it is connected to the network when it is connected to the network um, there are so many other things that um, the wired and wireless uh, communication criteria they come into play then uh, another example uh this is associated with queues okay the network queues uh this is very much important because uh, when we will um, uh, like uh, talk further into uh, performance analysis we'll take up certain uh, queuing systems into consideration so it's very important to understand what queue is uh, in the first place we have seen queue of people standing uh, waiting for a bus or uh, in front of post office or banks etc so that is basically what a queue is but when we are um, uh, uh, trying to understand what queue is in context of computing systems uh, or in context of computer networks whatever uh, queuing queuing refers to uh, more uh, properly if we state it it refers to an arrangement of, for set of members to appear for an activity okay we assume that we have a set of uh, people or a set of tasks or set of requests that are being buffered in some uh, computing space and they are all waiting for their uh, tasks or objectives to get uh, like fulfilled okay so the this arrangement is called the queue and whoever the persons or 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 whatever it could be request itself that are waiting in the queue to get completed uh, has been like you can see in the diagram that we have taken here is a first in first out queuing system the, all the uh, requests a set of requests okay remember we are not uh, saying only one request there could be uh, so many requests uh, it there could be requests beyond the capacity of the buffer and if this happens then some of the requests they get dropped out okay so uh, we are taking arrivals and the people are uh, or the requests are being waiting there is a waiting line whenever we are uh, calling a waiting line waiting line there, uh, there there's a length of the waiting there's a time involved in waiting okay and the service area where the actual processing is being done and whenever the processing is completed there is a departure from the queuing system okay so uh, what are the standard ter standard terms that are being associated over here that uh, appearances the members appear to get their uh, objectives or get their task to be processed so these appearances are called arrivals to the system okay activities that are being process the processing system the computing system that we are talking of this is associated with the service that is being imparted by the computing system okay so service is a standard term the members that are being arriving uh, you remember the set of process the set a set of requests or the set of people or whatever so the members of this set they are called the customers it's not needed that the customer is always a person it could be a request or it could be a, a anything it could be a processing task or anything any unit of task 
and overall arrangement is your queuing system. Okay, it's pretty clear about how what a queuing system is. So uh, again, the question uh, comes that if you are uh, if you are given this sort of network queue, how to measure the performance of a network queue? So since we have the in the in the background we have the concept of what a queuing system is, what are arrivals and customers and all those things. Okay, so now uh, now things will come into our mind that uh, when, if we are given such a system, how to um, uh, find out the performance of such system? Obviously, the first and the foremost thing will be the server utilization. Whether the server is being utilized properly, or uh, for a certain period of time there is a gap, or you know the system is left idle and there is a long queue of people waiting outside, is this happening? If it is happening, then the performance is being degraded of the server. Okay, so the server utilization is very important. Next is length of the waiting lines. Okay, if the length is like very long. Then, uh, as we have uh, like seen in uh, you know maybe in railway counters etc., people uh, they would accommodate the length. But what happens when we have a computing system? The system is being uh, constrained with a certain limit of jobs. More than that job, uh, if uh, say for example there is a um, length of n jobs that can be accommodated by the system. If the n plus uh, one job comes into the system, it means that it's going to get discarded. For that particular instant, okay, so it had has to uh, it had to wait for uh, its own time to come. The length of waiting lines is very important. Then variation in waiting times over larger volumes of requests. The requests they come um, like with uh, variation in time. There will be a variation in uh, number of requests. Okay, maybe in the first hour the request that is uh, coming that request might get multiplied. Or uh, uh, it get diminished in the next hour. It can happen. So the variation uh, could be there to measure when this type of network queuing system is being considered. And obviously the delay experienced by the requests or by the customers in a more standard way, if you are saying, over the uh, time being elapsed. The scheduling process: how the jobs are being scheduled. Is there a kind of uh, particular pattern? As in the last example, we have seen that uh, there is uh, this um, FIFO queuing system is there. That whatever the first job enters will get itself processed. Okay, so is this there some kind of pattern, or there is some kind of say shortest job first or something that uh, irrespective of uh, the jobs that are entering into the system, if the last person to enter has uh, you know a, a small job to accomplish, then why not get his job done first? So this type of there are so many patterns are there. So what kind of scheduling is being done uh, plays a very important role here. Again, uh, one more thing is uh, of vital importance is priority treatment. Are we uh, prioritizing the uh, incoming the jobs that are being coming into the system? Are we prioritizing their execution in some way or other? So, uh, if there is a priority priority treatment, irrespective of the job's shortest time or uh, whatever, first come, first served, etc. All these will be violated and the priority, the person or the request with the highest priority will be treated first. It can be there. Then, uh, uh, given all these scheduling patterns and processes and treatments, we have network throughput to maintain. Okay, We have to see that the throughput of the overall networking system is not compromised. So, this can be one more performance criteria that could be measured uh, with respect to the network queue. Okay, then uh, request discard policy. If you are discarding excess of requests have came into the to your system, right? Now you have to discard. And what policy you are following to discard? You cannot just discard just like that. Okay, so uh, there has to be a discard policy as well. So there could be a nice uh, performance analysis of this type of policies. Then uh, system improvement on customer feedback. 
So, uh, whenever a person is uh, experiencing a kind of uh, beta queuing system or a computing system or anything, any, any, any uh, kind of uh, facility or service that are being given to the customers, okay, so what kind of improvement they are, um, uh, they might be, you know, suggesting from their own part and whether those feedbacks are feasible to uh, implement or not. So, if they are being implemented, uh, what is the uh, rate uh, that the implementation has been done or the scope that, uh, that the implementation has been successfully done. So th this could also be some other parameters. Okay, now um, also uh, for the relatively simpler systems, what happens? Uh, this kind of uh, queuing uh, performance analysis that is associated with the queuing uh, system, mathematical computation is normally preferred if the system complexity is very simple, not very uh, highly complex. But if the system is highly complex, in the sense that a system is divided into many more subsystems, okay. So, in that case what happens, uh, we prefer simulation instead or even in some cases where say for example, the size of input is very large, okay. Uh, the, maybe the computing system is one, but the size of input is very large or the size of input uh, or the size of external or in internal inputs, it could be uh, like varying from uh, some range to other in a, in, a, in a bursty pattern, okay. So, in that case, um, the complexity could be high and in that case, we prefer towards uh, simulation techniques, okay. Now, let us come to com uh, performance goals, okay. Very uh, precisely, uh, performance goals means what? Uh, we have to set certain objectives when we are even evaluating the performance of a computing system. Okay. The first thing is successful evaluation cannot be produced mechanically. Obviously, we cannot do everything mechanically, neither we can do everything mathematically. We have to do, uh, we have to um, attain uh, performance goals in some cases mechanically, mathematically, in some other cases it could be through simulation processes. Okay. It, it depends upon the application, the target application that we have. Then um, the detailed knowledge before uh, going through the uh, say this performance process, we have to have a detailed knowledge um, of that particular computing system, the purpose of the system in the first place, then uh, how the system is going to impact uh, the environment, whether the performance uh, or say the computing system that is being developed for its purpose is satisfied, etc. or not. Like that, okay. Then a uh, careful selection of uh, methodology, uh, the workload, what type of uh, platform techniques or IDEs are uh, taken into considered, the tools that um, uh, is best, best suitable for that particular uh, no, method. So careful selection of all these things are very much um, uh, of vital importance. Then uh, conversion. Uh, from an abstract concept to a real problem. This is very important because uh, when we are to design a computing system, the first thing that we have in hand is the concept, the abstract concept. Now, this concept then um, on the basis of whether it, it is uh, like uh, feasible, feasibility um, of, uh, you know, uh, with respect to whether it is going to fulfill the purpose for which it is being designed or not. If in, in that case, certain prototypes are being developed, set of prototypes, okay. Now, once the prototypes are being developed, now it's, it's not necessary that each of the prototypes will get converted into a machine. Only one prototype gets converted into a machine, okay, in, and thereby uh, the versioning comes, version 1, 2, 3, like that, okay. And we have to keep in mind that the analyst there are so many analysts behind a particular computing system and each of the analysts will have their own uh, viewpoints, their own styles, okay. Uh, and obviously the application, the target application, the target audience for which we are being uh, um, uh, generating this whole uh, computation process, they might have different specifications as well. So these are our performance goals we have, we have to take care of. And uh, if we uh, start talking about the steps of uh, analyzing the performance, the first is to state the goals, okay. We have to be very concerned about uh, what type of goals are um, associated with, uh, say, for hardware or the software front, okay. And then comes the listing of the services, whether it's a network service, 
or processor service. It could be a database service, okay, or uh, different types of qu uh, queries that are being um, uh, in given you know, hours of time taken to uh, process it and respond back to the users, et cetera, and all those things. And uh, a prediction, that is a prediction of the possible outcome. Say, for example, if we are taking the database part only, uh, the query that is being generated, whether uh, it's going to give you the correct result or it's incorrect or uh, will it work at all or not, et cetera, this type of possible outcomes, prediction on uh, the outcomes is again uh, important when we are listing services and outcomes. Third is uh, selection of metrics. We are uh, selecting the speed, accuracy, availability, the, the very general uh, metrics that come into account. Okay. Uh, when we are uh, speaking on the networking front, it could be throughput, delay, jitter, so many things. Uh, if there is an error or not, accuracy is there, to what level of um, accuracy we are expecting our computing system to perform, etc. And the processor part. Uh, a number of instructions that are being, um, you know, executed, processed, and presented to the users. So the speed of the processor that we are talking about here. Then listing of the parameters. It could be system parameter, workload parameter. We have just seen that system metric and workload. Uh, then parameters that uh, that are dynamic in nature, it might come uh, and uh, it might get just dissolved into the system uh, during the ongoing process of execution. So listing of parameters is there. Then uh, select what type of factors are there that are actually influencing the system, okay? Uh, that can vary or uh, it may remain constant. Even um, there can be certain other things like economic, political, technological constraints are there that, are, uh, that could be uh, influencing in the decision making process. Okay, right. Then uh, selection technique for evaluation. Selection technique uh, would involve the analytical modeling, uh, analytical simulation of measuring the system. It could be different, in, or either ways it could be uh, carried on, right. And it will obviously depend upon the time and the resources that are given into hand and the desired level of complexities desired level of detailing that the application demands or the analyst sees from his viewpoint. Okay, so uh, similarly we have uh, workload selection and design experiments um, with us, okay, analyzing and interpreting the data, okay, and obviously very important uh, how we are presenting the result in a certain kind of visualization uh, would be their graphic form, Etc. So we can say that the complete evaluation process is carried out in cycles, and it's never in a single sequential pass. Thank you. Dear friends, in this lecture on per significance of performance analysis, we have attempted to understand various aspects of performance analysis. On that note, we would like to thank Dr. Aditya Sinha for coming here and de delivering this wonderful lecture. And thank you, dear friends, watching our lecture. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you. Thank you.